very good evening everyone i am udit gupta welcome to you all to the another series of podcast powered by the grow junction today we have mr dhananjay as our guest will be addressing our so he has done his mba from nmms and is currently serving as a product manager at tata click hello sir how are you hey udit thanks for having me over so how was your day how was your weekend it was great in fact i'm just back from a vacation so uh, <laughs> good to talk to you first before i get back to the whole uh, usual stuff <laughs> of product management yeah looking forward to this talk awesome see so let me just start with the very basic question which we as mba aspirants have gone through throughout our journey of 2 years like so mm-hmm. can you just tell us something about yourself like your whole journey till now how it has been right from your school days till now okay uh, um so uh, like ever since my school days uh, you know i have sort of always been the kind of person who likes to like create something new or uh, tries to solve some sort of problem like i mean that really sort of gives me a kick and uh, i've always been a very big question mark uh, right since my school days so uh, have this uh, habit good or bad you can judge that but <laughs> i have this habit of always asking why for a lot of things like whatever i see i always want to know the reason for that so that's that's how i've been conditioned uh, right since my school days and uh, like after school i i decided that i wanted to pursue this whole engineering part and then like uh, the management thing was also very very interesting to me and i was at some point of time uh, like uh, let's say during the final days of my school life or uh, like during my 11th and 12th uh, it became very clear to me that uh, yeah i want to have my career uh, in the management domain but it has to be very closely linked to technology so that was the kind of orientation that i developed by uh, like talking to different people uh, who were already out there working and also like reading up a lot about all of these professions so that's how i sort of uh, realize that this is the rough uh, area in which i want my career to be and uh, like because of all of these factors uh, ultimately i ended up in uh, nmims and uh, like throughout my mba journey i sort of uh, like went around trying to be part of different committees within college uh, like I, i tried to take up multiple challenges within you know all of those extra curricular competitions and stuff like that and uh, like eventually i en- ended up uh, like because of all of these things uh, i ended up having an internship with a startup and uh, that was a very early stage startup and as part of that uh, i was given the opportunity to do hands on uh, product management and uh, that's finally when i understood that okay there is something called as product management in this world and uh, it's it's sort of very very clearly aligning with uh, you know what has been some of my uh, inherent uh, area of interest which is you know trying to solve problems or like uh, trying to uh, get into the depth of things and uh, stuff like that so that's that's how i came to know about this whole product management area and uh, like uh, i would say i was fortunate enough to uh, sort of go through the campus placements and get into zykus which which had come to us in 2016 with a product management role so this is basically how uh my journey in product management started and uh, then like over the years uh, you know within zykus i was able to strengthen my uh, foundations of product management actually learn uh, you know the full time pm role uh, what it involves and how exactly do you go about it and as a result of that i ended up creating certain differentiating features from scratch uh, which uh, which led to around like 20 plus uh, new fortune 500 enterprising enterprises becoming our customers so that was uh, <coughs> like one of the best parts of uh, my tenure at zykus and uh, after around three and a half years out there in the b2b product space i finally moved into tata click which is as you must be knowing into e-commerce and that makes it a b2c company and at click uh, i now work with uh, software products that power the supply chain of tata click so the whole purpose of uh, whatever products i work with uh, the purpose of those is to drive greater efficiencies in the operations 
by automating various processes across the value chain and uh, also to improve the customer experience by speeding up certain key milestones in the customer journey like uh, you have refunds for example or product pickups etc so that's that's been uh, my journey so far uh, on a very very high level good to hear great so like since you have done a five year integrated course at nmms can you mm-hmm. just yeah. mention like which skills you learned in your during your mba days and like how your overall personality get developed during those days like how an mba helps an individual to grow basically so what to ask um so uh, you know the way i look at it uh, mba is uh, of course it is a lot of uh, specific uh, domain specific and a lot of technical knowledge that uh, that you get while doing your mba but over and above everything it is a lot about uh, common sense uh when i say this it sounds uh, very easy but uh, trust me you know trying to get that common sense and trying to make that part of your uh, behavior and day to day life that's something which is uh, not that easy and uh, <clears throat> that is exactly what i have uh, been able to gain throughout this uh, journey uh, uh, during my mba um so as i mentioned earlier uh, i was always clear that yeah i like technology uh, i want to get into the management uh, side of things so when you come to the uh, technology management part it's you know like uh, most of my uh, friends and uh, other people who i know from this course uh, so either they are all of them in uh, project management or uh, product management so these are the two uh, two roles in which most of the people passing out of this course uh, have uh, found themselves ending up with and uh, like uh, although i didn't know uh, when i had actually started of the course but uh, now now when i look back at it uh, this course has in fact equipped uh, us with all of the necessary skill sets that are required to grow further uh, in this sort of career where you are into the management uh, side of things but at the same time you are very very close to technology so you need to understand technology and then uh, be able to contribute effectively on the management side uh, so this is the kind of uh, like skill set which i was able to gain uh, while going through this course yeah. so so like you have also done a pro- six year six month program sorry at london business school so can you just explain a bit more about it, that particular course which you pursued and how it helped you in your particular like professional front or how it helped you sure uh, so so this course is uh, is is you know is is through the uh, tata group and uh, like tata group has sort of identified uh, certain uh, people from all across the group uh, who are in the early stages of their career and uh, like there is a rigorous evaluation process for the employees of the tata group and uh, like uh, based on based on the uh, evaluation i think out of around uh, 1500 uh, there were around 85 of us uh, which got selected so uh, so like after this we were put through a rigorous uh, leadership program which was led by uh, like eminent faculty from london business school uh, the whole thing focuses on you know like now that we are in our early stages of career we have seen uh, how things work in an organization right so we have the actual hands on knowledge uh, we have already like mo- many of us have already done our mbas and uh, like after the mba we are already in our career uh, the kind of insights that we now have uh, this course is focused on taking those insights helping us to reflect further on where we are what our journeys have been so far uh, where we want to go and uh, how do we exactly become uh, more effective leaders so this whole course is uh, focused uh, around that uh, it's called the bloomment uh, program and you can uh, you know for further details you can sort of uh, search for that uh, but yeah like th- so that's basically the course the first part involves like all of these classroom sessions with london business school uh, the next sessions involve a lot of uh, things around uh, like coaching like life skill coaching etc uh, you have something like a reverse mentoring as well where we are supposed to mentor uh, like senior executives from the tata group and uh, 
then finally like we also have a capstone project uh, which will again uh, be part of the group so it's sort of a collaborative effort between the tata group and london business school and yeah i was uh, fortunate enough to get uh, selected for that great so so like what i have seen and what i have listened from various people is that like people do agile product management course and people become a scrum master and the, like they learn these methodologies software development methodologies so and these help in product management too. so is it like that product management is more of a tech job or technically inclined job or is there a business side to it um see that that is a good question and uh, you know i also had all of these questions when uh, when i started off uh, in my career uh what i have come to know is that uh, you know it's very very specific on the company that you work for so different organizations uh, will have certain modifications in the whole product manager role so in certain places as a product manager you would be uh, you know very very focused on the business aspect of things like you want the product to scale up to grow uh, and there is a very significant uh, focus on the whole growth aspect of products or like acquisition of new customers and stuff like that uh, so that's one type of uh, product management which you have uh, then certain other companies it's like very very technical focus so like out there the product manager also sometimes uh, doubles up as your uh, scrum master that's not the ideal scenario but yeah, it it does happen in a lot of uh, cases and uh, out there you are working uh, you know very very closely with all of these developers and uh, the tech guys and it does become you know very technical focused in certain other places and uh, then there are uh, certain companies wherein uh, the whole product management role is about uh, like uh, uh, you know focusing on your customer and uh, all of these may be external customers like you know your end users or they may also be your internal customers like let's say if i uh, if i am the product manager for supply chain in tata click my uh, my customer would also be my internal supply chain team so there would be certain companies with uh, with product management roles focused on all of these customers and out there like your primary objective would be like along with helping the end customer it would also be to make the lives of these internal customers uh, much more easier so uh, depending on what type of company you are in uh, there would be certain modifications uh, to the expectations that would be there from uh, your product management role got it so it's not like i got your point that it's not like like if you're working very closely with a developer who who is doing a certain code so it shouldn't it's not like that you have to know that code but it should be that you should at least have an idea about those things like how things are working because then only you'll be having a better communication and things will go on got it and hey, uh, so you say that as a product manager you need to know uh, you know what is written in the code and uh you need to be able to read or understand all of those lines of code then no that's absolutely not the case and wherever that is the case uh, i mean i feel sorry for such uh, product managers uh sorry. the whole function of product management is a lot more uh, strategic in nature uh i mean the very fact that a pm would have to get into the lines of code and try to understand what the different functions are and stuff like that that would mean that you don't have a mature tech organization uh yeah. and that's not the best way uh, an organization would be able to make the most out of the skill set that a pm has uh, a pm in my view would be somebody who is uh, like you know very good at managing all the different kinds of uh, stakeholders and their respective expectations uh, by stakeholders you have your business stakeholders you have the end customer who is there who's who's actually using your product uh, you you also have like various other teams like let's say your your entire uh, tech team you have the uh, ux and design team right uh, and then you have certain growth teams which also uh, in some scenarios you'll have to deal with so a great pm would be somebody who is able to effectively uh, like communicate evangelize the whole product and the vision uh, within all of these teams and drive everybody taking all of them together without having any direct authority over any of these so that uh, sort of uh, 
uh, you know tells you a lot about the kind of challenges that uh, a pm would face in this kind of a role so that was going to be my next question only so what challenges generally a product manager faces in his day to day activities or like in his tenure like how it goes mm-hmm. okay so uh, the the number one and most common challenge uh, is uh, uh, sort of managing expectations of everyone right so everyone wants everything all at once uh, from you as a pm um, and uh, you know so maybe your your customers are not happy about a certain thing uh, there might be times when along with that your business teams are also not happy about a certain thing and they would want certain extra features or a new product in order to make their lives easier uh then at the same time you might have some uh, some, some pressure from certain other stakeholders for their respective uh, requirements right and uh, along with all of this now your tech bandwidth is always going to be limited so you have to prioritize like which one do you take up first and which request do you take up next and so on right now along with this uh, as a product manager because you would be doing a lot of research about uh, like what's going on in the market what competitors are doing uh, where the product needs to go next you would also have certain uh, new features or new uh, product ideas that you have come up with and you want to take it ahead right so uh, <laughs> you have to sort of try to prioritize all of these and uh, be able to select which one do you take up first if you're taking uh, the requirement or a feature which one team is going to use properly or if uh, if it's something which is going to benefit a certain section of users uh, you the challenge that comes uh, very often is that you have to manage the expectations of everybody else who's getting uh, a second or third priority uh, as opposed to the one which you are picking up first uh, so that's you know one of the most common and basic challenges that uh, every product manager faces uh, the best way to get out of it is uh, like there are two steps to it the first one is doing your research well uh, understanding the impact of each and everything that you are trying to build uh, in your product and uh, then like once you have the impact in front of you uh, once you have it properly enumerated uh, in in terms of like proper figures etc uh, once you have that much of uh, insight uh, the next part is of course uh, you know communicating it properly to all of these other stakeholders who got who did not get the first priority so the second part is again a very tri- tricky area uh, because while you are communicating to all of these other stakeholders uh, because of because of your decision to take something at second or third priority uh, some of their metrics might have been moved right so uh, it, it's it's sort of a very communication intensive uh, role i would say where you have to like uh, be in constant touch with your different stakeholders try to manage all of their expectations and uh, see it's it's not it's not easy to make everybody happy and in product management you will come across certain situations where uh, you know you simply can't keep everyone happy and i guess that's fine because ultimately uh, your goal has to be uh, like driving significant uh, customer impact and uh, like uh, revenue for your company so if these two things are met and if you can justify your prioritization uh, uh, based on uh, numbers that uh, yeah like these two things are getting met i think then i guess uh, it's fine and you have to uh, sort of navigate through these uh, difficult situations and conversations so that's like one of the most uh, you know basic challenges which uh, product managers would usually face in any company okay so like what skills in your opinion matters the most for an individual who wants to enter this domain and wants to do well so what skills would you prioritize um see it's it's not uh, so much about the skills because uh, you know a skill can be sort of learned over time right you keep on doing the same thing again and again and uh, you will be able to get it uh so of course you need to know about agile uh, like most of the companies today are following the agile methodology uh, you need to be able to know how to write uh, like good prds good user stories etc but i mean you know just just you can just go to any product management blog and you'll get like tons of information about uh, what is actually required and what are the different skills 
to me it is uh, more about uh, certain other traits which you need to consciously develop uh, over time if you want to grow as a pm uh, the first one in that would be uh, you know having attention to detail so if you want to grow as a pm you need to be able to uh, get into the depth of things so you can't say that okay like uh, you know i have reached till this level of depth in whatever i'm building and i don't need to know further about like how it's going to be used or uh, what are, what is the impact of that right so you need to be able to get into the depth of everything like you need to know exactly why you are building something and uh, uh, like uh, I, i'm sure uh, yeah so once you get into the depth of things i think things become a lot easier so that is one very important trait that you need to have uh, the second one would be uh, patience so uh, as a product manager many times like you are on full throttle uh, you have a lot like you have thousand different ideas uh, you want to build a great product and also like uh, a lot of other people are coming to you but uh, if you do not uh, hear out your stakeholders properly or if you are not able to uh, you know patiently listen to customer feedback and you know try to uh, get the real meaning of what uh, what your stakeholders or your customers are trying to tell you uh, then i think you will be in trouble uh, even after developing a lot of great features so i guess patience is a very important trait that a product manager has to have uh, third one would be uh, i would say curiosity uh, so Uh, curiosity is something like you know you need to have this hunger of knowing about like why something is uh, how it is right uh, and you need to be able to question each and everything that is coming out there so only if you ask the right kind of questions to to your stakeholders to your customers uh, if you ask the right kind of questions to yourself about what your assumptions are uh only then you will be able to uh, bring out uh, like very great products which are properly thought of uh, in the detail that is required right uh the next one would be uh, like effective communication and i think i've already covered this earlier but yeah you need to be able to communicate properly with all of your uh, different stakeholders in a language that they understand and also uh, at a complexity level that they'll be able to understand right so this is something which is very important to manage the expectations that are there from you uh, from various stakeholders and trust me uh, stakeholder expectations are never going to go away they will always be there as you grow they will only uh, you know become like uh, become greater and uh, the last one and i guess this is one of the most important one is that uh, you need to uh, you need to have a very sharp uh, focus on your metrics so uh, as a pm yeah i can look at the competition i can see that okay they have a great feature i i also want to build it or let's say a, a very important business stakeholder comes to me and says that uh, i want this particular feature please go ahead and build it but uh, at the at the at the at the end of all of it you need to be able to know how much of an impact is this going to create on your organizational metrics right because if something if you build something you end up spending so much of energy uh, and uh, effort into a particular feature or a new product and it's not something which is in line with your organizational metrics then i guess uh, like there's no point of uh, building anything at all right so uh, whatever you build it has to uh, like kind of be very very focused towards all of your uh, metrics so i think these are the things which are important for a pm in terms of other like skills etc you can like <laughs> i mean uh, i don't need to uh, uh, like you know talk about them because like there's literally a lot of material available for uh, like how to uh, go about the whole product management role like you have agile you have a lot of other things as well so yeah coming to a last question so like for a fresher and back to who is not having any relevant experience in terms of internship or project in product management domain and if he or she is not from a tier one b school as well so what mm -hmm. pathway would you recommend for such an individual because sometimes it gets difficult to directly enter into the product management domain. 
so what pathway yeah. would you recommend uh see there are so so in order to be a great product manager uh, either you need to know about product management itself right so if you are uh, if you are into product management and if you have all of that experience which this individual that you mentioned will not have right so then it becomes very very easy to get into product management uh the other uh, route that i've seen people taking is uh, domain expertise right so if there is a person who is not from a b school who does not have the uh, product management experience and if they want to get into product management uh, what i would recommend is make yourself an expert in any particular domain uh, of your choice right so for example if if let's say there's someone from a finance background uh who wants to now get into product management uh of course i don't expect that person to be able to know how to code and uh, you know uh, like understand the tech side of things but the strong point that he does have is that uh is his whole financial uh, financial domain knowledge right uh now as a product manager uh, both of these things are important and even if you have one of them uh, getting into the whole domain is much more easier so the first step for such a person would be to build this domain specialization and knowledge uh and then whichever organization that you're working in if there is a product management team in this organization already then i guess it's it's sort of very very easy so for example again taking the example of someone from finance right uh if you are a finance person and let's say you're working in a fin- uh, in a fintech company right obviously you have a product team uh it's 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 sort of uh, easier for a person to move from a core finance domain into uh, product management within that same fintech company uh, as compared to what difficulties he would be facing if he tries to move into some like totally unrelated sector like you know a customer experience or growth or e-commerce or something like that so i guess uh, you know this would be the recommended path and i have seen certain uh, success stories of this type as well so yeah for for people who don't have pm experience it's it's okay uh, you know all of us started from scratch right none of us uh, was born knowing what product management is so it's nothing like you can't get into it uh, it's just that you may have had a different kind of uh, career path initially and now since you want to pivot into something else you need to be able to find that linkage between what you are doing currently uh, what your uh, signature strengths are right now and how you can leverage on that to get into product management if you say that you know this person uh, from finance domain would want to uh, attend a particular uh, product certification course and then try to apply in a totally unrelated domain uh, i don't see very great chances of him being able to get into a great role right but uh, finding a linkage between his current set of expertise and uh, trying to leverage further on that in order to pivot into product management i think that is something which would definitely help out so so that answers all of our questions for the day so thanks sir for being our guest today so i hope you would have also like been hosted by me. so thanks yeah, yeah definitely it was really great to talk to you